Hello, good morning. I'm back with a new topic. From first year to final year, to postgraduates, this topic, anatomical landmarks, is the most repeated one in all question papers as well as it is the favorite topic of external examiners during practical exams. But it's not just for exam sake that you should learn them. See the tagline in this badge. It says God creates, we recreate. So if we have to recreate one of God's own creations, the smile, you realize the magnitude of the challenge before us. The consistency of the oral mucosa, which lines the entire oral cavity and the architecture of the underlying bone is different in various parts of the edentulous ridge. Hence, it becomes imperative to know all about the landmarks in, around and beneath our complete dentures. Now let's see how this knowledge is going to help us. It will help us to extend our denture over the maximum area possible. This is exactly the snowshoe principle of broad stress distribution discussed in my last class. Second is to know about the load bearing capacity of each area on which the denture is and third for long term success of complete dentures. Paying attention to all these enables us to fulfill the most fundamental role in prosthodontics that is the d Vance dictum or d Vance principle. This principle states that perpetual preservation of what is remaining is more important than meticulous reconstruction of what is lost. Did you get that? It means that when you build something, you should not destroy anything that is already existing there. So, if your patient has to be happy wearing your dentures and go through life enacting all these expressions without either the dentures flying off or him swallowing it, it becomes mandatory. To know in detail about the foundation area that is the denture bearing area or the supporting structures and the limiting structures that is the boundary set by lips, cheeks, tongue etc. Now let's classify anatomical landmarks. They are broadly classified under three categories, limiting structures, supporting structures and relief areas. For the purpose of explaining, I have here a pair of dentures, a maxillary denture and a mandibular denture placed on a master cast and I have two casts on which the anatomical landmarks are marked and colored. So coming to the first, the limiting structures. Limiting structures means the structures at your at the periphery of your denture. See this is the border of your denture and all those structures coming at the border area are called limiting structures. We have marked the areas here. We will be coming to it in detail in the next class. So all these structures at the periphery, see in the lower cast, all these areas, these areas come under the category limiting structures. Clear? Now supporting structures means, see your denture is going to rest on this denture bearing area, right? It is going to rest on this place, right? So the structures that come under the, in the denture bearing area that supports the denture, those areas that can withstand the forces of mastication are called supporting structures. So this is a whole denture bearing area. There are several structures here. Out of these, certain areas are capable of withstanding the forces of mastication. So those areas are called supporting structures. Clear? Again, the supporting structures are classified into stress bearing areas, primary stress bearing areas and secondary stress bearing areas in order of the capability of withstanding stress. See certain areas are, provi are capable of providing more support than the others due to certain anatomical features. So those areas which can best withstand the forces of mastication are called primary stress bearing areas and the others come under the category of secondary stress bearing areas. Fine? So now coming to relief areas. See, in this danger bearing area, there, there are certain areas over which you cannot apply any pressure. For example, there might be some important blood vessels or nerves in that region so that you cannot apply pressure okay so those areas come under the category relief areas 
areas that require reduction or elimination of undesirable pressure okay same in the mandibular cast also there might be certain areas where you cannot apply pressure so those areas come under the category relief areas so this is what we discussed this class the classification of anatomical landmarks of maxillary and mandibular arch under the three categories limiting structures supporting structures and relief areas we'll be seeing each one of these in detail in subsequent classes my next class will be on limiting structures in the maxillary arch until then Take care, stay safe.